Hello, light of my life. <laughs> Hello, sunshine. <laughs> Excuse <laughs> me. Hello, gorgeous. <laughs> Hello, handsome. <laughs> How are you, Maggie? I'm really wonderful today. Are How you ready are you? to? I'm great. Are you ready to immerse yourself into yourself? Oh my goodness! Yes, that's a cool concept. I think so. Wow. Let's let's jump in. Well, Im- I immersion. Well, I was actually. I've, gonna, always, I've always liked the word immersion. By the way, because it just says, you know what? Don't. It's not going to be a passing thought. We're really going to immerse ourselves into mm. a concept. Well, there's something really satisfying when a word completely encapsulates what you're trying to say. Not bingo, all, bingo. Not all words are capable of that. Right. So, right. well, and it's 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 interesting that you've already said this because I did have a question for you today, mm-hmm. and it's about getting stuck in the starting gate, if you will, when manifesting, because many times there's that lull. You begin, you get all the information, you do the journaling, you're doing the gratitude. The train is is chugging down the track. Uh, effortlessly and you just you know every all of your modalities are spinning and you've got it working but then you feel nothing it's just sort of like the bottom drops out and again the stuck in the starting gate thing is the phrase that keeps circling in my head because that can happen in the process of manifestation whether you're a newbie or you know you're a manifesting veteran if you will Liberation from the starting gate comes with with the determination that I am not going to be led by my feelings or emotions. We are trained up in the idea that we are motivated when we feel like it. You want to go to the gym? Well, I don't feel like it. Mm. Do you want to do this better thing? Well, I don't feel like it yet. So when we are moving away intentionally from being led by feelings and emotions, we're liberated from the starting gate. Well, and and that's totally it. That's uh, there it is. Right. I mean, not not listening to those emotions in the moment of of the decision making. This is the one area where people cannot afford to put this off any longer. Our moment is experiencing life now, right now, your moment, the space you're occupying is all that there is. Mm. And so we want to activate our desires and emotions in this moment now, not waiting until you feel like it, but come out of the starting gate on purpose, liberate yourself from those, the confinement of emotions and feelings. You just mentioned activating your desires is that what you're doing in, in that present moment when you know you need to make the right decision to not listen mm-hmm. to emotions, mm-hmm. to do the right thing? Because there's obviously this, this moment of ignition where we either you know, sort of pop over to the right and, and, we, and we do the right thing as a kinetic believer or we remain in our feelings. And I always feel like there's a little missing mechanism mm-hmm. sometimes when you do the wrong thing and you give in to the emotions. And so what is what are you doing? doing you personally what are you doing in those moments to to say i'm choosing i'm making the 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 decision to to live beyond emotion and do the kinetic belief right thing versus obviously the wrong thing i retreat from thought forms that i'm identifying with i retreat from feelings i retreat from negative emotions by finding a grove of trees to walk within by taking a a walk along a beach by going into the forest to forest bathe so that i can intentionally put pressure on engaging with those uh, desires that i've chosen on purpose to enjoy and to manifest (laughs) And, and what are you do? What about the, the moment of pressure? Because there is a moment in, in the forest bathing and all that. We, we, I I understand that we engage in that in preparation for these moments of decision. And I'm wondering what we're doing in that specific moment, that millisecond decision moment of, you know, am I going to, what, what would even be? A what good, I'm I don't, doing I don't is, even have an example. Well, what I'm doing is I am forest bathing. I, that's where I'm finding the pressure to engage in the moments. The moment is being is is mm. created from removing all of the restrictions of thoughts, the have tos, the calendar dates, the the uh, the thoughts of feeling guilty if I don't perform according to the expectations that I put on myself or someone else has put on me. If I am mm-hmm. paying attention to negative news of the day, the disasters around the world, yeah. I've got to put pressure back on this moment that I'm occupying by going into a hygge space, lighting a candle, putting on some music, meditating, forest bathing, whatever it takes to put pressure on uh, creating the space for the correct idea wow. to 
show up and that I can embrace and hold on to that. So you're really revealing to us that there are no shortcuts. If we're not actively preparing, then the moment of decision it's it's not something we can do last minute. Oh, I just I just remembered I need to not be emotional today. Um, mm. <laughs> it not working that way. So so the preparation of and I guess this is what you even began by talking about of immersion within ourselves is required, and there is no other way to guarantee that we're going to make those those right decisions for manifesting. Don't wait until don't just expect it to happen. And this goes back to those first 21 seconds in the morning, doesn't it? Mm, yes. On purpose preparing yourself for the day because look, it's the simple things that have an immense power for building great confidence in our lives. Mm. And the simple, there's nothing much more simple, you would think, than setting aside 21 seconds in your morning to put pressure on the satisfaction and fulfillment that you want to manifest for the day. Actually, you know, in in the same terms of what we're speaking with here and talking about is life is very simple. We make it complicated by wanting to do the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. We make it complicated by wanting to follow after the stimulation of a negative feeling or emotion. And it's when we get our value from the opinions and the judgments of other people that things really start to become complicated. Wow. And if so, for example, if you're living a life that you're full of confusion and drama and it seems complicated, it's because we're trying to incorporate things that we really shouldn't be incorporating into the lifestyle that we have uh, Mm. uh, adopted for ourselves. What a wonderful red flag as well, because I always love finding those red flags, those little things that you can notice in in your life so that you can know (laughs) not to anticipate something impendingly negative, but to notice when you are leaning too far outside of kinetic belief, you are leaning in the wrong direction. And so when complication shows up, when things feel scattered, disorganized, uh, complicated is the perfect word for it, then it's a red flag that we're mm. not in our highest self, it sounds like. Well, it does, think of it this way. It doesn't take long once we come into this natural and you're two, three, four years old to derail. Because, <laughs> look, there, there were, there were, there's this cosmic form that I, the I, idea of you came from. And here we are, and, and all of these expectations show up that turn us away from oh, the man. cosmic form, that substance, that ideal, perfected version of you existed from. That's so funny. There was this really wonderful thing that circulated on the internet, and it was this little girl, and she she it showed her before she left for kindergarten, her first day of kindergarten mm-hmm. in the morning. She was so cute, perfectly pristine, put together, and then her mom took also took a picture of her when she came home, and her hair was wild mm-hmm. and mad, and her shirt was like <laughs> buttoned on different buttons. Her sweater was off, hanging, dragging the ground, and you know, somebody even commented, they said, get that girl an apple juice on the rocks. <laughs> like, <stat. laughs> right. But, you know, that's it, though. We, we're, the moment that we're sent out into the world is the opportunity to derail. <laughs> Well, that's it's it. It's insane. Because, and that's what we're wanting to do is to go back and find the original version of self, that idea of your higher being, the one that was first imagined as you. Mm. And that, that first imagination cast the particles of you into existence and your essence, the form that gave you life, came into the natural first, untainted by the ideas or expectations of purple hair or green hair. <laughs> but if that's the, con- the, the conformity of ideas that you want to be a full self, expression, then it's a beautiful thing. Otherwise, you were established to desire forms that are an image of you and not anyone else. I love how you just said the way we were originally imagined. And what a thing to to pause and consider the the creator imagining you. Hmm. And it gives it gives more of a weight, I think, to embracing our true self and more of a responsibility even to make sure that we are, you know, um, filling that up and, and inflating that sense of self. Well, knowing that we came from that first imagination. Now, what yeah. most, what do all children have in common? 
yeah. usually a very big imagination. Right. This thing is working. It's it's a TikTok, TikTok on the inside of mm. you, and it's imagining life. It's imagining. It's dreaming. And it's limitless. And it's Just, limitless. Yeah. And and things can be whatever color you would assign to it. <laughs> and trees can live and breathe and have arms and chase you through the forest or not. <laughs> but it's whatever you yeah. pretend to imagine it to be, and you're actually playing out the interplay of imaginations that are original and natural to you. Mm -hmm. Actually, Albert Einstein said that the gift of fantasy has meant more to me than my talent for absorbing positive knowledge. Mm -hmm. The gift of fantasy, the gift of imagination, if it's been dulled over the years, it's critical that you stop and, and ask yourself the question, what happened to your gift of fantasy? Why is the gift of fantasy so important to you? Because it is. Mm -hmm. It's vital to your success. And maybe it's because you lost touch with your original God-given, creative-given imaginations. And they've been misplaced by the noise of all of the anxious imaginations and thoughts and expectations of people and circumstances around you. I have to say, as somebody who spends a lot of time with you, you go through your entire day making, purposing to make everything fun. And not stupid and silly, but fun, lighthearted. Well, stupid it's a... and silly can be fun for me, too, I'm, I have to admit. <laughs> I mean, you're not. Okay, I'm a Jerry whoa, Lewis whoa. fan, so right. we, can, we can do <laughs> but that. But it's not 24-7. <laughs> but you are, I, I know you, and you can just see it, and you, you make this effort, this concerted effort to engage in everything in a lighthearted way. It has weight to it, yes. You can you you approach it with seriousness if it's required, but it does have a lighthearted energy to it. And so it's made me wonder if, if it's it's the it's the fun it's igniting the fun that's going to in turn ignite this curiosity this imagination that is so easy to lose over time mm -hmm. absolutely because again we we are liberating ourselves from the starting gate yeah. by becoming free on purpose because what happens is the the expectations of others uh most people find that being free to enjoy life, for example, is no longer an option for them. Mm. One that, you know, was cast away many years ago. And the expectations of the lack of freedom and peace and joy and happiness have been heaped on them to the point where they can't open the starting gate anymore. Wow. And these are people that typically feel like they're just too saturated with responsibilities, mm. too saturated with have tos. And they've internalized a dialogue that says, I would rather not do that. I'm not willing to do that, but I have to anyway. Mm. I'll put this off, this misery off as long as I can before I put my hands to it, because there's something else I would rather be doing. And so the me negative mental constructs have closed that starting gate. And there's a, an, an attitude of misery now mm -hmm. that leads this person through the day. So they awaken. And rather than putting in the work in that first 21 seconds to become positive and excited about being aware of the day and full of the possibilities of joy and happiness, they are embracing the, the, uh, the sad existence of, of misery, mm -hmm. not being happy. This is conjuring up a, a memory of a, of a wonderful podcast where you focused on injecting positive disruptions into our life. And, and it, it's, it's striking me in a way that, hey, if you need imagination, write a prescription for yourself for fun, <laughs> to watch a hilarious movie, to go and play and, and play outside. I mean, heck, climb a tree or whatever it's, is required. But I, it does seem that so many of us, when we have buried ourselves with excuses like you just laid out that the only way to overcome that is to engage re-engage in in fun the things that we naturally organically are igniting that imagination and that joy and the difficulty there though is that it doesn't begin with the the purposeful intention to go and have fun it actually begins with the inner conversation you're permitting yourself to have mm. One, one does not do something without first thinking and talking to themselves about it. Right. You don't end up in a situation that you shouldn't be in unless you first had the inner dialogue and conversation <laughs> that permitted it. You put it into the GPS. <laughs> you put you it drove in. there. <laughs> right. <laughs> so it's the inner conversation that you're allowing yourself to have. Throughout the day, not only in that first 21 seconds, but then you're, you're responsible for what you're going to talk about hour number two yeah. on your way down there 
when you're driving across town, when you go into the store, and when you're walking around. All these things. You're responsible for that inner dialogue that you're having when you lay down to rest at night. All those thoughts should become uncluttered, and every thought should be put into the goose step of being edifying and encouraging and championing you and celebrating you. And if you do that, then it will all others around you as well, like we talked about yesterday. When you say, when you use the word uncluttered, um, can you expand on, on your motivation, your meaning behind uncluttered? What does that look like? What are we free from? Are we, what is that? Exactly. An uncluttered thought to me is one that's no longer sampling possibilities. Oh, wow. It's one that I've thought about and I've embraced and I've uh, uh, brought it into my my realm of consciousness, my way of being as a mental construct that I I approve of, and I say yes, this is the best version of me in this moment mm. tomorrow, in this moment next week and next year. This is the version that I want to manifest. And so it becomes a thought that I'm going to hold on to Mm. intentionally. And I work it out with my journal. I'm blueprinting it so that I can see it and say, yes, I approve of this. And so I'm no longer double-minded about, well, maybe this isn't the best version. Mm. I've done the work. And so I can put pressure on that to perform. What a perspective shift to really allow, imagine that your thoughts and your, well, your mind really is sort of this elite club and that all the thoughts in this club, they have to be vetted and they've gone through this rigorous process of determining if they should even be allowed in the club. And I think that's really fascinating because that also gives you the sense that at that point you can trust your thoughts. You can trust your mind. You can trust the you, you've determined, you've predetermined exactly what you're allowing in there. And so you can then engage in this, in this really a relationship with thought. And this is what we talk about every day when we finish a podcast. We're sending out much light and love. Well, yeah. what are we actually doing when we say that? Light is not just, you know, the first thing that comes to mind is just positive. Yeah. Well, it is positive, but there's more to light. Light is the essence of our inner being which transcends the second or the lower nature of self, Mm. which is the, it's made up. It is the pretense of expectations. Mm. And the light in the rediscovery processes of our attitudes permeates through that. And it enlightens consciousness with genius of purpose, these ideas that are filled with wisdom for living life as it's meant to be. And so our original purpose intelligence that's been there all along begins to rise to the surface as light in the rediscovery of self. Wow. The, I, I love the, the sense of substance that you're describing that light has. And it's not just a pretty buzzword. <laughs> it's something Although it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's a multifaceted <laughs> word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and to put a bow, uh, not that we didn't yesterday, but on the relationship thing, if you find your faction, you find your relationships in this, that they are in alignment and agreement with the light that we're talking about, your group of friends and all of your acquaintances that will come to the light that you are putting out there that's going to celebrate and edify and champion your talents. Mm. It will happen. It will occur for you. It will manifest for you when you intentionally hold yourself to the highest standard of your original genius. You will then, you're going to attract those individuals and people and all that are of like kind that are on the, the same mission that you've assumed for yourself by unconditionally loving themselves mm-hmm. and then unconditionally loving you as well. And what not that the ultimate reminder that you just gave? Because you just said holding yourself to the highest standards when you're talking about relationship. You didn't say hold everyone else to the highest standards. <laughs> That's no. exactly right. It's a good reminder. We're going no, within. Is, We're changing so tr- self. <laughs> no, the, the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step and you mm-hmm. take that by yourself. It's in the solitude of yourself <laughs> yes. that you begin that journey. So you take the first one and do it today. Actually take it today. I don't, and I'm not saying that you haven't already Start today anew and afresh. Take that first step today. Start small and continue to continue to uh, journey as you journal along the way. <laughs> and the single steps you're taking are going to develop into these giant strides. And you'll mm-hmm. find like we were in That's snowshoeing great. down a mountain. You just this glide is a second nature, a second stride, mm-hmm. a sense of strength that comes from within. And just go for it. 
Lay it out there and go for it. Your best life is now. So turn all of your affection within and locate the strength of your eternal source. Mm -hmm. Just say this out loud. Say, I am worthy to follow the dreams of my alter ego. I am worthy to follow the dreams of my alter ego. Which is my highest being. Which is my highest being. And I want to manifest those same desires. I want to manifest those same desires. Right now. Right now. (laughs) I'm unconditionally loving myself. I am unconditionally loving myself. And I believe in who I was meant to be. And I believe in who I was meant to be. I'm attracting those that help me. I'm attracting those that help me. Manifest my goals. (laughs) Manifest my goals. And so their goals will also manifest. <laughs> Their goals will also manifest. <laughs> There's a mutual in this, a mutual I'm responsibility. That, in this. Yes. <laughs> I am in the right place. I'm in the right place. <laughs> at the right time. Mm, at the right time. Doing the right thing. Doing the right thing. I will succeed. I will succeed. As success becomes me. As success becomes me. I have the power. I have the power. To attract change. To attract change. To all of my circumstances. To all of my circumstances. And I know where to locate. And I know where to locate. What I want. What I want. And how to receive. And how to receive who I am. Who I am. I am healthy. I am healthy. I am filled with energy. I am filled with energy. I am loved. I am loved. I am light. I am light. I am happy. I am happy. I am joyous. <laughs> I am joyous. I am the right person for I, me. I am the right person for me. And I'm the right person for thee. And I'm the right person for thee. <laughs> Sending out much love and light to all yeah. you KB creators around the world. Thanks as usual, Steve, for all the wisdom. Bye. <laughs>